Last year, we reported on over a half million rounds of ammo stolen from just one Cabela's in Delaware. Uh, this is something that we really have never seen before. And what we noticed was most of the attention really went towards the store, kind of what they were doing wrong. Um, and very little went to, well, where'd all that ammo go? <laughs> like, where did it actually go? Well, now we know. Now, before we get into it, I do want to thank our sponsor, ES Power Drink, for not just supporting this channel, but being able to put together Trinidad Scorpion Peppers in this delicious drink to where I can reap the health benefits. I'm losing weight, I'm sleeping better, I have a better outlook on life. There's so many benefits uh, from eating a Trinidad Scorpion Pepper that I, I can't get because I'm not gonna eat one. <laughs> And what this does is it essentially builds up your tolerance. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways now uh, that you can get this Trinidad Scorpion Pepper, not just in a drink, because you want to drink it every Sunday to build up a tolerance, but now they put them in these ice chips where you can do it every single day. And it's way more affordable. And they also have combo packs, uh, that sort of thing. Check out the link below. All right, now what happened to these 500,000 rounds of ammo? Well, ultimately, Cabela's was selling their ammo on the floor, not behind a counter, which is very typical for Cabela's and Bass Pro. And over a year, a half a million rounds were stolen. Now, this definitely isn't a couple random people coming in and just stealing a couple boxes here or there. This is clearly an organized effort of some sorts. Well, since then, there has been an arrest. And a 38-year-old woman was arrested for stealing the 500,000 rounds of ammo. And when questioned about where did this ammo go, ultimately why she was stealing it is she was selling it at one-third the cost of what you can get at the store to ultimately drug dealers and violent criminals in Delaware as well as Philadelphia. So in other words, you have violent criminals in Delaware and Philadelphia armed with half a million rounds of ammo. Now, the fact that it was one person does not surprise me. I mean, it's clearly an organized effort. It wasn't just random people coming in and stealing boxes of ammo. Somebody was taking a ton of ammo on a consistent basis. It was planned. Uh, it, it, it's clearly at least one person. Now, here's where the problem really lies because we know where the ammo went for the most part. But her sentencing, you know, as far as really who's getting punished for these crimes, it's not the violent criminals. Uh, they're not getting punished for this. No, nobody asked her, well, who? Give us names. They just, you know, just drug dealers and violent criminals. And they really didn't even go after her because she was ultimately sentenced to a drug treatment center saying that it was the influence of drugs and alcohol that made her do this. So the criminals aren't getting punished at all. Um, the violent criminals, she's not getting punished at all for theft. Um, I mean, you could argue the drug treatment, it's not punishment. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Going to jail is punishment. Going to a drug treatment center is not punishment. That's helping you. But it's Cabela's they're going after. They're actually going after the one victim. Uh, this is who all their targets are on is the people selling the ammo, those who were actually robbed. And this is really a huge problem in America because ultimately if you're, it's good as evil, evil is good. And if you rob somebody, for some reason, the victim's the bad one, uh, you know, well, why'd they get robbed? You know, what did they do to, to get themselves robbed? You know, let's really focus on that and come up with actual crimes that they committed because they were robbed. You know, if my house gets broken into and somebody steals my guns, if I don't have them safely secured in a safe, which I do, but if I didn't, I'm the criminal now. Like, it's really kind of appalling is what's happening here. 
Uh, so again, ultimately what you have is you have Cabela's missing 500,000 rounds of ammo stolen from them for just simply conducting business like they do everywhere else across this country by having ammo where you can go pick out the boxes you want and carry them yourself to the cash register. Because they are a victim of crime and they were robbed essentially strategically over a year by one woman and then she sold all that ammo to violent criminals and drug dealers that Cabela's is the criminal in all this. And this is really a problem we have in society because, you know, if I was in New York City, for example, and I went and robbed a drugstore and, I, and the cops were out there waiting for me, I mean, I'd go to jail, but I don't have to post bail. I just go sign myself out and I walk out and I go rob another one, you know, and then before you know it, they're the criminals. Well, what is, what is it you're doing stores to allow these criminals to come in here and rob you? Um, it's really appalling. And the sooner we can kind of at least see it, <laughs> Like you gotta see it first, and once you see it, and I know I'm preaching in the choir, um, then things have to change. Things have to change. Because ultimately what we're doing is we're living in a country with more rules and laws than almost anywhere else on this planet. Like we're not nearly as free as you think we are uh, because of all the ridiculous rules and laws that are being applied uh, to try to keep us safe and healthy. Um, it's, it's appalling. And this is just another example of policy that essentially says, if you are robbed, you're the bad guy. You got to figure out, well, what did you do wrong to get that criminal to attack you? Um, <laughs> what, you know, so here you go. You got violent criminals, not even targeted at all, uh, for buying stolen ammo. You got the thief who stole 500,000 rounds of ammo. Um, not, you know, just drug treatment is all. Um, and then you have all sites set on the criminality of the store itself. And that's the appalling part. So, uh, there you go. What happened to 500,000 rounds of ammo? Apparently it's okay to steal it and it's okay to buy it. It's just not okay to be robbed. Any thoughts or insight on any of that? Definitely put it below. Do want to take a moment and say most people watch this channel, not subscribers, click that subscribe button. Greatly increases the algorithm and our ability to get these messages out. That link is below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.